Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. You're sharing this unconditional love, this amazing grace and truth. Uh, it's just setting people free. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm starting my fourth week of teaching through a series that I've entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body. This is the teaching that the Lord used to just totally revolutionize my life. We do have it archived on our website. I encourage you to please take advantage of these materials. Go to our website because if you get hold of these truths, it will just transform your life. I've already, in a sense, given an overview of all of the things that the Lord showed me about spirit, soul, and body. And what I want to do now is to kind of drill down to just go in and magnify some of the applications of this to my life. And, you know, we are celebrating 55 years of ministry since the Lord touched my life. And, man, I, I'm just so blessed at all that God has done. And we put out a little uh, video that I was watching this weekend, and it went back to my very first television program on January the 3rd, 2000, and I started by saying, stay tuned for one of the most amazing testimonies that you've ever heard. And then we uh, went to kind of an introduction. And anyway, it was my testimony. It was talking about me and how that the Lord uh, delivered me from being a religious Pharisee. And I started teaching on two types of righteousness. So here I am 23 years later teaching the exact same thing that I taught on the very first day on television. And I tell you, this has uh, revolutionized my life. I have one of the most miraculous testimonies to share with you, and it's mine. And I tell you, I used to actually be embarrassed and ashamed about my testimony because I don't have the typical testimony. I've never done some of the things that people consider these terrible things that God saves you out of. But you know what? I was a Pharisee. I was a modern day Pharisee. And I really believe that the greatest testimony that we could see today is somebody who is trusting in their own righteousness come to a realization that without Jesus, you're nothing and that you have to have the power of God working in your life. So I'm going to be talking about righteousness, right standing with God. You know, the word righteous, according to the Strong's definition, it literally means equity of character or act, specifically Christian justification. And you can go into a lot more detail than that. But my little layman's definition about righteousness is it's just right standing with God. Did you know nobody can have a relationship with God if you don't understand how to have uh, righteousness be in right standing with God? And there's a lot of confusion about this. There's a lot of people outside of the body of Christ, people that haven't even been born again, that they just think that, you know, if your good outweighs your bad, somehow or another God puts you on one of these scales. And if your good is more than your bad, that somehow or another you'll be accepted. I even heard that the Pope was asked a question, and it was about, will atheists go to heaven? And he said, yes, if they're good people, that even atheists will be in heaven. I tell you what, that is not a proper understanding of what it takes to have right standing, righteousness with God, to be declared righteous. And so there's a lot of misunderstanding outside of the body of Christ. But even inside of the body of Christ, there are people that get born again by putting faith in what Jesus did for them. They believe that their sins are forgiven. But then they get on like this treadmill to where you've now got to start going to church and paying your tithes and studying the Bible, and you do all of these things. And I would say that the average Christian believes that you have to, in a sense, earn righteousness with God. Now, again, you may not use the word righteousness, but you, you have to earn an answer to prayer. You have to be good enough. You have to be worthy enough for God to flow through you. And that is a total misunderstanding of what the Bible teaches about righteousness. And when this is one of the applications of this teaching that I have on spirit, soul, and body, this is one of the things that just totally transformed my life because I transferred my faith from looking at what I had done to looking what Jesus had done for me. And I started relating to God on the basis of what Jesus did for me instead of what I did for him. 
Now that may be easy to say, but I can guarantee you the majority of people watching this program, you still have this sense that you've got to do something to be worthy. You know, I've used this example a lot of times, but I talk about seeing people raised from the dead, blind eyes open, deaf ears open. I've seen a lot of miracles happen, and I praise God for that. But most of you, or let me rephrase that. I don't know exactly if it's most, but many of you watching this program believe that God is God, that He can do anything, that miracles could happen. And so if we were in a service together and say somebody died, like we had a little baby that was 14 months old that died during a service. I think this is back about 2018, 2019. And this mother just ran to the front while we were on the stage. There were six or seven of us in a panel and she just ran to the front and just put her baby on the stage. And this baby had died. This baby's arms were back like this. And I mean, this this baby was dead. And we started praying uh, for this baby to be raised from the dead. Now, most of you who are watching this program would believe that, yes, God could do it. And you might even believe that because I say that I've seen my son raised from the dead. I've seen other people raised from the dead and blind eyes open miracles. Many of you, man, would get around. You'd want to see. You were all excited about it. But you know where I'd lose most people is if I say, all right, if you believe that God can raise the dead, can do these miracles, then you pray for this baby. Now, see, there's many people who would believe that if I do it or if somebody else is doing it, man, you'd be excited. You'd want to get up there and see. But when I say you do it, all of, all of a sudden your excitement turns to fear and dread. Now, what happened? Did you all of a sudden believe that God changed? No, it's but you believe that God only uses certain people. And whether it's conscious or subconscious, you believe that somehow or another you got to be worthy. See, what that is doing, you aren't understanding how righteousness, right standing with God comes. You think that it's somehow or another based on your actions. I go to a lot of churches and I, I've heard many people pray, Oh God, just make us righteous. Make us righteous. And did you know the scripture says in Ephesians 4.24, I've already used these verses, but it says that you were created in righteousness and true holiness. Righteousness is not something you obtain, not something you work towards. It's something that when you get born again, you were created righteous and truly holy. And see, a lot of people struggle with that because what they do, they are only aware of this physical body and then a mental, emotional part on the inside. And they are ignorant of the fact that it's your spirit that got changed and made righteous. See, this is one of the very first applications that God made to my life was when I was thinking about God and relating to Him, I thought that he was looking at me the way I look at myself. He was looking on my actions, my outer part. He was looking on my mental, emotional part. And I knew that my actions never were as complete as they needed to be. I knew that my thoughts were never as good. And because of that, I just could not understand how God can consider me righteous, how he could accept me. But when I begin to recognize that it's not my body and soul that become righteous, it's my spirit that was recreated righteous. And John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And when I realized that in my spirit, I was born again righteous. I was created that way. And then I've already used these verses last week, but Ephesians 1, 13 says, that once you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You were vacuum packed. So this part of you, your born again spirit that was created in righteousness and true holiness is vacuum packed, sealed, so that when you sin, sin may affect your physical body and give Satan an inroad against you and your finances and your physical body. It may affect your mental, emotional part and cause discouragement and fear and worry and things like that. But your spirit is sealed and your spirit does not lose any of its right standing, any of its righteousness with God. And in order to approach God in spirit and in truth, you have to approach him based on who you are in the spirit, which that spirit is righteous. When I saw this, it just began to totally transform my life. 
And I tell you, it wasn't easy. It wasn't something that just automatically happened. I remember when I first started seeing these things, I think I referred to all of this last week. I'm not going to go back through all of that, but in Romans chapter 5, there are five different times it says in the same way that you accept that you became a sinner through what Adam did, not through what you did. When you sin, that doesn't make you a sinner. That just confirms that you already had a sin nature and you were born in sin is what the Scripture says in Psalms chapter 51. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You had a sin nature. Now, see, I had accepted this, that it wasn't what I did that made me a sinner. It was what I inherited that made me sin and that that was just my nature and that I needed a Savior. I had accepted that. And in Romans chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, it says five different times that in the same way that you receive this sin nature, and that's what caused you to sin, when you get born again, you receive the righteous nature of God, and this righteousness will begin to start producing right actions on the inside of you. Five different times it says that. And I mean, I saw it, but it was hard for me to embrace I saw it in Scripture, but I couldn't see it when I looked in the mirror. I couldn't see it when I was just feeling about, do I feel righteous? Do I feel loved? Do I feel anointed? Do I feel confident? And I couldn't discern this in just my physical realm or my soulish, mental, emotional realm. And I remember one of the things that I did, I used to stand in front of a mirror and look myself eyeball to eyeball and I would preach to myself, and I would quote scriptures that you are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I can guarantee you the very first time I said that, all the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Fear hit me like, God, don't strike me dead. I'm just trying to say what the Word says about me. But I'd had it ground into me so much that, you know, I was a sinner and that I had come short, and I lived in a realm of condemnation, just constantly feeling unworthy and unloved. And when I begin to see these things through the Word, the only way I could embrace it was to quit going by what I saw in the mirror, by what I felt in my emotions, and I started going just by the what the Word says. This goes back to the very first things that I shared four weeks ago when I was talking about this, that you can't see your spirit. You have to, this is a window into the spiritual realm. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so you have to look. It also says in James chapter 1 that this is a perfect law of liberty and a person who looks into this perfect law of liberty is like a person beholding his face in a mirror. So this is a spiritual mirror. This is how you see into the spiritual realm and who you are in the spirit. You can't see it with your physical eyes. You can't feel it with just your emotions. You have to look at this like a spiritual mirror. And so in the mirror, I saw that it said, I was the righteousness of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I believe it's around verse 30, it says, Jesus is made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Ephesians 4, 24, I was created in righteousness and true holiness. I didn't feel that. I didn't always see it in my actions or in my thoughts, but in the Word I saw it. And so I began to start just speaking what God's Word said about me and I was going beyond what I could see with my eyes, what I could feel with my emotions. And I tell you, it was traumatic at first. I honestly felt like, God, this can't be right because it was so contrary to what religion teaches. Religion teaches that you're an old sinner saved by grace, but your identity is a sinner. The Word of God teaches that you were an old sinner, but you got saved by grace, and now you are the righteousness of God. You are as pure and holy in your spirit as Jesus is because Jesus has become your righteousness, 1 Corinthians 1, 30. He is your righteousness. You are joined unto the Lord, and you are one spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. I've already talked about all of this. Your spirit is one with God. Your spirit is exactly like Jesus is. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. 
Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as He is, so are we in this world. You can't see that in the physical body. You can't see it in your mental, emotional part, but in your spirit, you are as righteous, as holy, as pure as Jesus is because it is the spirit of His Son sent into your heart crying, Abba, Father. I think that's Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. So, man, I began to see these things, and it was a major breakthrough in my walk with the Lord when I quit going by what I could see in the mirror, just my physical realm, my actions, what I could feel in my emotions, and I started basing my relationship with God on what the Word says that Jesus did for me and not what I could see that I was doing for Him. I transitioned from approaching God in the flesh, in my own ability, and I started approaching God in spirit and in truth. And I tell you, when you do that, it changes everything. And this is what I want to begin to start sharing. I'm going to be talking about two types of righteousness. And I think this is one reason that people struggle with this, because you actually need a self-righteousness, not only a faith righteousness, but you need a self-righteousness to be able to relate to people and to shut the door on the devil. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. If you yield to sin, which is unrighteousness, it gives Satan an inroad into your life. So yes, you do need to live right. You need to have right actions. And you need that to shut the door on the devil. You also need it in order to maintain relationships with people. Did you know if I didn't treat my wife correctly, if I beat her, if I was unfaithful to her, if I was constantly mad at her, I guarantee you we're going to have problems in our marriage. I need to treat my wife the way that Christ loved the church is what the Scripture says. And so I need to act right towards my wife and towards people in order to get along with them and to have people love me. And so there is a place for self-righteousness, acting properly, thinking properly, talking properly. And you need that for relationship with people and also to shut the door on the devil. But when it comes to relationship with God, your self-righteousness is like a filthy rag. That's what Isaiah chapter 64, I believe it's verse 6, says that all of our righteousness, this is talking about your self-righteousness, is like a filthy rag. And if you look that up in the Hebrew, it, the word literally means it's like a menstrual cloth. And man, you don't, you don't glorify something like that. Your self-righteousness, it may make you look good compared to me or compared to somebody else, but when you compare yourself to God's standard of righteousness and holiness, every one of us comes up woefully short, woefully inadequate. You know, as I look back at my life, I really am thankful for the way that God revealed Himself to me because uh, just a real quick synopsis of this, when I was eight years old is when I got born again, and I got genuinely changed. The next day in school, my friends could tell I was different. And they said, what happened to you? And I told, you know, eight-year-old. I wasn't out living in sin and doing terrible things, but there, it was a genuine change. And I remember my friends making fun of me when I told them that I got saved. But, man, I was changed. But I became a religious Pharisee. I didn't mean to, but I went to church. And basically, church, most churches, the church that I was raised in, and I believe that most churches today preach that God loves you and moves in your life proportional to your performance. That's what I was taught. And I was taught that if I really want God to answer my prayers and to love me and to move in my life, then I needed to live holy. And so I got on this treadmill of trying to live holy and do everything. And I've lived holier than most people. I'm not saying that in a prideful way. I'm just saying that, man, I took it to heart and I gave it everything I had. You know, I'm now, by the time you see this, I'll be 74 years old. I've never said a word of profanity. I've never taken a drink of liquor. I've never smoked a cigarette. 
Man, I have lived a separated, holy life. But the problem was I got to trusting in my goodness in what I had done, and I thought that that was going to earn me favor with God. And every time I would pray for something and it didn't come to pass, I thought, well, I just need to try harder. But then I had this encounter on March the 23rd, 1968, where God showed up. I didn't see anything with my physical eyes, but I guarantee you I was in the presence of God, and by revelation, I saw the glory of God. I saw the holiness of God. And compared to God's holiness, man, I saw that my self-righteousness was like a filthy rag. And I repented in sackcloth and ashes. And, you know, I look back now, and I just am so thankful that God helped me to see this self-righteousness that it didn't accomplish a thing. It might be good when it comes to relating to people and stuff like that, but when it comes to God, my self-righteousness was no good at all. And I repented and confessed everything I had ever done or ever would do. And instead of rejection, I felt the supernatural love of God. And then I got into these things that we're talking about, and I began to understand that God loves me, not because I am lovely, but because He is love. And I began to relate to God spirit to spirit, not flesh, not based on my actions, but based on what Jesus did for me, that born-again part. And this is what I'm going to be sharing with you this week, is talking about two types of righteousness. One is a self-righteousness that is necessary for maintaining relationships with people, with society, and shutting the door on the devil. But then there is a faith righteousness that is not tied to your actions. It's tied to what you believe. It's tied to what Jesus did for you, and all you have to do is access this grace through faith. And I'm going to be sharing this with you, and if you can understand this, it will literally stop condemnation in your life. All Satan has ever had against you are your actions, and he comes and points out what you have done, failure, and makes you feel unworthy to receive. And the truth is that if you're just talking about your flesh, your physical actions, and your mental emotional part, you are unworthy to receive. But there is another part to you, the spirit part, and that spirit was created in righteousness and true holiness, vacuum-packed. It never loses this right standing, and you can approach God in spirit and in truth on the basis of what He's done for you and not what you do for Him. Man, that's kind of just an introduction to what we're going to be talking about this week, and I think this will really help you. I've got all of this in this book entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body. This is my free gift to you. It's a 160-page book, and I promise you that this would just light a fire on the inside of you. If this helps you even just a fraction as much as it's helped me, this is going to change your life. I really believe that. And so we also have this book in Spanish. We've got study guides, we've got CDs, DVDs, USBs, a audio book, and also we've got a little video where a person is graphically illustrating all of this. So our announcer is going to share with you all of these ways that you can take advantage of this teaching, and please call or write today.